Does your faith translate into action? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. At the 1993 annual meeting of the American Heart Association, 300,000 doctors, nurses, and researchers met in Atlanta to discuss, among other things, the importance of a low-fat diet in keeping our hearts healthy. Now at such a convention, you'd expect the participants to eat low-fat meals. That didn't happen. The Boston Globe reported that those doctors and nurses, while talking about low-fat diets, actually ate a lot of high-fat fast food during the convention. They were consuming foods like bacon cheeseburgers and fries at about the same rate as people from other conventions. When a reporter asked one cardiologist whether or not his eating high-fat meals set a bad example, he replied, Not me, because I took my name tag off. Today's Gospel reading is a milestone in the preaching of Jesus. In the book of St. Mark, we have in the last few days been accustomed to Jesus speaking in the synagogue. Today, he goes to the outside world to relate with the people in their everyday life. He meets them on the seashore, quite symbolic of his desire to reach out. And he tells them a parable, the parable of the sower. We all love stories. They are easy to grasp. We can relate to them, especially if they mirror our life, our own conditions, struggles, fears, and joys. They make us think. Jesus uses these parables to explain the ungraspable mystery of his kingdom. Like Jesus, we too must move our religion from inside the walls of our church to practice what we hear, what we read, what we do inside, and apply them to our daily life. I came across this beautiful quote from St. Thomas Aquinas to reflect on today from Jennifer Bergen's article on belief plus desire plus action. He said, Three things are necessary for the salvation of man, to know what he ought to believe, to know what he ought to desire, and to know what he ought to do. What should we believe? When God throws seeds of faith along our way, do we pick them up and plant them into fertile soil? Or do we just ignore them and let the birds of indifference and unbelief eat them? To see is to believe, a slogan many of us carry, is somewhat incongruous to what really exists in this world. For instance, we do not see the wind, but we believe. We do not know how the universe evolved, but we know that it has a starting point, logically and evidently, in God. Or do we throw the seeds of faith on rocky ground, where joy is fleeting as the Word of God does not take root? When we are engulfed with problems, when we experience rejection and persecution, we wilt, we give up. Or do we throw these seeds into a thorny bush where they are suffocated by the lures of the world and the anxiety that is caused by envy, jealousy, lust, and greed? After a high from a retreat or a bombastic speaker, it takes just a few days for us to return to our old sinful ways. But when we plant it in the rich soil of our heart, it sprouts, grows, and we harvest more seeds to plant for generations to come. For our salvation, we believe in God's mercy, in Christ's death and resurrection, in a life eternal awaiting us much more grandiose, unimaginable in splendor. That is what we should believe. Going back to St. Thomas's quote, he points out what we ought to desire. Do we desire to grow in our faith, to become holy in God's image and likeness? We are naturally drawn to the beautiful and pleasurable. Who doesn't want nice clothes, good food, and all the comforts the world can offer? But more than that, we must desire that which is permanent, that which will lead us to the eternal riches and pleasures, unfathomable and phantasmagorically mind-blowing. We can only have this if our salvation starts with a longing for intimacy with God through our hungering for more of our Catholic faith. Finally, St. Thomas asks us what we ought to do. Do we immerse into our faith so that we can understand, appreciate, accept, and decide that heaven is what we must work for rather than what is on earth? Our actions should parallel our words. We must walk our talk, for faith without works is dead, as in James 2.26. What actions must we make to bring us to that belief, that desire for a permanent residence in heaven? Well, we start with the most basic, a consistently regular prayer time, reading the Word of God through the Scriptures, going to Holy Mass as frequently as possible, receiving the sacraments regularly, 
fasting and tithing, doing acts of charity. In other words, filling our world with godly actions so that the eventual outcome will be, well, actions that are godly, forbearance and forgiveness, loving the unlovable, faith and hope in the midst of our problems, peace in our heart, joy in tribulation. When we ought to believe, desire, and do what is essential to our salvation, there will be no shame to wear the tag, holy, for it is appropriate and rightly deserved. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, I desire to be holy. Grant me the grace to spend time and attention to meditate upon the things that you said and did in your earthly life and to act with urgency to acquire the virtues that will lead me to holiness. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.